All right, get this. Ready for a deep dive. Today we're going where quantum computers could become like uh, economic weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. And China, well, they're facing a major innovation crisis. Sure, yeah. Yeah, we've got these two super interesting sources. One dives into how quantum computers could impact uh, U.S. national security. Mm. And the other, it looks at why China might be having trouble keeping up in uh, this whole technology race. Interesting combo, right? You've got this potential for like technology that could totally change everything, and then you've got this system that seems to be stuck. Totally. Okay, so let's start with this whole weapons of mass economic destruction thing. Yeah. This first source, man, it really paints a picture of what that could look like. It's uh, It really makes you think about the Manhattan Project, you know, like yeah. developing the atomic bomb. Right. The U.S. government, they put so much into that, right? Yeah. And it seems like they've been doing the same thing with quantum computing, but quietly for decades. Yeah. The report, it actually shows this 268-page document outlining quantum computing roadmaps. Wow. From like over 20 years ago. That's a huge head start. That's wild. So it's not just sci-fi anymore, huh? Nope. These things are like real. Oh, yeah. And... The consequences could be massive. Huge. The source even says that quantum computers could like cripple national security. Yeah. Disrupt financial markets and uh, expose government secrets. Yeah. All in minutes. It's scary stuff. To really get it, we need to talk about how our digital world is protected now. Okay. It all comes down to encryption, right? Right. It's the backbone of online security. It basically scrambles sensitive data, making it unreadable unless you have the key. So like a digital lock and key. Exactly. So where do quantum computers come in? Think of it this way. Encryption now is like a puzzle. Okay. A really, really complex puzzle that would take normal computers, like, forever to solve. Years. Yeah, even centuries. But a strong enough quantum computer, it could crack those codes super fast. That's, uh, that's a little terrifying. It is, yeah. Be like every lock in the world suddenly becoming useless. So is the U.S. basically making a master key that could unlock anything? That's what the source is worried about. Mm -hmm. They say the U.S. government, especially the NSA, see quantum computing as a like national security must have. Mm. Being able to break encryption would give them access to, well, anything. They can spy on anyone. Yeah, anywhere, anytime. That's a heavy thought. Yeah. It's like we're entering a whole new world of uh, espionage and cyber warfare. For sure. But, okay, so the U.S. might be ahead, but what about everyone else? Right. China, especially, right? That's where our second source comes in. Exactly. This one, it takes a different approach, but just as interesting. Okay. It looks at why China, even with all its economic power, might be having a tough time making uh, groundbreaking advancements. So while the U.S. is going quantum, China might be stuck. Kind of, yeah. The source uses this analogy. They compare China's innovation to a really skilled craftsman carving wood. Beautiful, intricate, but limited. Okay. Like they haven't figured out metalworking or like using stronger energy sources. So they're good at getting better, but not at making those huge leaps. Right. And when something like quantum computing comes along, it's not about getting better. Yeah. It's a complete change. It's like uh, dimensional crushing is what the source calls it. Dimensional crushing. Yeah. Think about the printing press. Okay. Before that, books were copied by hand. Slow, right? Yeah. But the printing press, it changed everything. Made books accessible, changed history. That's dimensional crushing. Exactly. A technology that just wipes out the old ways. Wow. So China's system, even though it works in some ways, might not be flexible enough for this kind of change. That's what they're saying, yeah. They're good at copying and improving, but not at those truly new ideas. The spark of originality, yeah. They seem to be missing that. So you've got the U.S. with this crazy powerful tech. Yeah. And China may be struggling to keep up. Yeah. That's got to create some tension. Right. Oh, definitely. And that's what we'll get into next time. You know, this whole U.S.-China thing with quantum, it makes you wonder, like, is the U.S. doing this on purpose? What do you mean? Like, are they trying to scare everyone, you know, with this quantum tech, like a uh, deterrence thing? Oh, interesting. Like the Cold War, but with information instead of nukes. Exactly. Back then, it was all about, if you nuke us, we nuke you. Mutually assured destruction, yeah. Right. Now it could be, if you spy with quantum, we spy back. A whole new level of tension, huh? Hmm. But if quantum computers are so powerful, why haven't we seen them do more already? That's a good question. The really big, powerful ones are still being worked on, but smaller, more specific ones, those are already out there. Oh, really? I always pictured them like, 
massive futuristic machines. Some are, yeah. Yeah. But they're also being used for stuff like uh, finding new drugs faster, mm -hmm. making financial algorithms better, even predicting the weather more accurately. Wow. So it's not all spying and cyber warfare? No, not at all. There's a lot of good that can come from it. So it's not just about who gets there first, but how they use it. Right, exactly. And that's why it's so important to talk about it now. Yeah. We have to think about the ethics, the risks, before it gets out of hand. But isn't it too early for that? I mean, it's yeah. still early days, right? Not really. We've seen it before. Technology gets ahead of us, and then we're scrambling to catch up. True, true. So what kind of ethical stuff should we be thinking about? Imagine a world where everything you do online is visible. Oh, wow. Your bank stuff, your shopping, even your private messages. To anyone with a quantum computer. Yeah. No more privacy at all. It's a little creepy. It is. And it makes you think, you know, about freedom, about the government's role, about what freedom even means in a digital world. Whoa, that's deep. So it's not just about protecting data, it's about protecting our rights. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not some far off future thing. It's something we need to deal with now. So what can we do? It all feels a bit um, overwhelming. I know, it's complicated, but we can't just ignore it. Talk about it, spread the word, demand answers from the people in charge. Be informed, be active. Exactly. We can't just sit back and let the governments and tech companies decide everything. That's a good point. Yeah. But if China's really struggling with innovation, like that source said, what does that mean for them? Are they just going to fall behind? It's possible. The source, they say that China's system, the way they focus on control, it might be holding them back. But they've made a lot of progress, haven't they? Yeah, but mostly by copying and tweaking what already exists. Hmm. They're good at improving things, but not so much at coming up with brand new things. So they're playing catch up with the US. Yeah, and the question is, can their system adapt to this whole new world? They need to get creative, but can they do that and still keep things under control? That's the million dollar question, and that's what we'll talk about next time. Okay, so we've talked about this quantum race and how China might be falling behind. But you might be thinking, so what? What does this have to do with me? Right. It's a fair question. This isn't just some uh, competition between countries, though. Right. This is about the future of technology, information, how we live in a world with quantum computers. So it's not just governments and spies. This affects everyday people. Absolutely. Think about everything you do online. Banking, shopping, talking to people, even healthcare. Yeah. All of that relies on encryption to keep your data safe. And quantum computers could break that. It's not just about national secrets then, it's about our own information. Exactly. That's why it's so important to understand this tech and what it could mean. We need to figure out how to protect ourselves in this new quantum world. So what can we do? Should we all go back to school for quantum physics? Uh-huh, maybe not. But there are things you can do. First, be smart about the information you get. Okay. Don't just believe everything you read. Do your own research, ask questions, think critically. Be informed, be skeptical. But is there anything practical we can do to protect our data? There's some new tech that might help. Quantum resistant cryptography, for example. What's that? It's all about creating encryption that even quantum computers would have trouble cracking. So it's like a digital arms race, always trying to stay ahead of the hackers. It is, yeah. And that's why these conversations are so important. We need to understand the risks, but we also need to find solutions. So it's not just about being afraid of the future, it's about shaping it, right? Exactly. And that's where everyone comes in. We have to stay informed, talk about this stuff, and demand that our leaders do the right thing with this tech. So it's not just science. It's about our values, our choices. Absolutely. We have to decide what kind of future we want. A world with no privacy, where a few people control everything. Or a future where quantum computing makes life better for everyone. Wow, those are big questions. It's a bit overwhelming, honestly. But we can't ignore them, right? We can't. It's not going to happen overnight. It's a process. But by staying informed, having these conversations, and holding those in power accountable, we can make sure this tech is used for good. This has been a really interesting deep dive. We've learned about how quantum computers could change everything, for better or worse. We've seen how China might be struggling to adapt. And we've talked about why it's so important for all of us to be informed and engaged in shaping this quantum future. And remember, this is just the beginning. We're still figuring out a lot about this quantum revolution. But by staying curious, asking the right questions, and being part of the conversation, we can help make sure this amazing technology makes the world a better place. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And to everyone listening, 
Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay curious.